Senator Basio too takes oaths of office as Cross River State's governor and promises a robust administration. Tonight we take a look at his agenda for the state. And Edide Motu the fifth, the Obong of Calabar, if a kingmakers declare. This is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anakol. The newly sworn in governor of Cross River State, Senator Basio Otu, has taken the oath of office and promised a robust administration. Otu, who represented the South Senatorial District in the 8th Assembly, said his gifted opportunity uh, in the legislative, uh, with that he would leverage on the template in providing best governance to the people of Cross River State. He said his administration is confident and determined to restructure the state's huge debt stock while strengthening its fiscal uh, pasture. Joining us to discuss uh, the agenda, of course, uh, um, is the um, chairman of the Cross River State All Progressive Congress in the person of Alphonsus Eber. Um, it's so good to have you join us, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, viewers. Thank you for having me. Well, I think congratulations is in order as Cross River Stage now has a new government. Um, and of course, what lies ahead is a huge responsibility, talking about uh, one of the few things that he mentioned, um, which is the huge debt profile of Cross River State, and of course, many other things that lie ahead. But let's start with talking about the agenda of the um, Basio II uh, administration. What exactly um, is he... What does he stand for? What is he pushing for? What are the things that he's going to do for Cross River State uh, that, of course, made Cross Riverians vote for him en masse? Yeah, thank you very much. If you have followed um, the campaign promises of Senator Prince Basi Adetutu, to the newly sworn in governor of Cross River State, you would have gotten the full glimpse of what he promised Cross Riverians which is not just an idea that he took solely, but he used the opportunity of his thank you visit in the month of July, August, shortly after the primaries, to get the buy-in of the people of Cross River State going around the 18 local governments. And he came up with a single document called the People's First Agenda. Mm -hmm. So what do you expect as an agenda setting for the new government in Cross River State is a sustainable, human-centered, holistic development paradigm that is pro-people, that is pro-poor, that is pro-masses, that is pro-women, that is pro-widows and pro-elderly. It's all about people, people and people. And it is not amazing because while in the legislature, as a House of Rep member and senator, Priso II, is being remembered as that member of the National Assembly who institutionalized empowerment. You will recall that as a member of the House of Reps and Senator, this man bought over 400 cars and shared to people to encourage the transportation business state. This man in the area of Adam Senatorial District gave over 1,000 plot of land, secured a certificate of occupancy, and a reasonable number were given, about 500,000 and above, to build these houses. And all he did was employment opportunities. If you see his bill in the National Assembly, the petroleum industry bill today that caters for the employment of so many Nigerians, the NDIC Act today that has brought sanity to the banking sector, you will see that everything he has done is pro-people, pro-people, and pro-people. And therefore, it was not amazing when on that day of his inauguration, he declared again that he was coming for the people. But one other landmark statement he made on that day. Mr. Chairman, are you there? Can you hear me? 
Oh, I think we have a bad connection there. Can you hear me? I think that uh, we've lost that connection there with the chairman. Uh, Mr. Eba, can you hear me? Okay. All right, go ahead. We lost you for a second, but go ahead. Oh, sorry. As on the day of inauguration, the speech of His Excellency Senator Prince Basi Edeto II was very, very clear. Mm. Agro-industrialization and addressing security challenges in cross river state. He made a clear warning to criminal elements in the state that they have just two options. Drop your criminal act and join the government or leave cross river state immediately. That was a very strong statement. And I know he's a man that follows his word with action. So today, perseverance know that they can go to their bed and sleep with their eyes closed because one man has taken an oath not to sleep again so that perseverance can sleep. And that man is the new governor of Cross River State, Senator Prince Basi Edeto II. So it is about the people. He's talking about moving from food on the table to providing food for the table. Therefore, the mantra that his predecessor, Senator Professor Ben Ayade, came up with to say food on the table, hands on the plow. While there was food on the table in the last eight years, everybody's been called upon now to put their hands on the plow. So agriculture is the way to go. Mineral resources, mining opportunities is the way to go. Going back to school and learning all forms of vocational trades is the way to go. Providing healthcare services for our people is the way to go. Providing access roads for rural dwellers. Providing social amenities like electricity, pipe bone water, and Medicare is the way to go. It is on very good note to know that Professor Ben Ayade has already set the state on an agro-industrial lane. So all that Prince Otu comes upon to do, like they will call him the icing of the cake that is so sweet, is coming as a finisher and as a polisher. So okay. it's going to be a better time for Cross River State. Great. Talking about his speech on um, his inauguration, he talked about the fact that um, he has been gifted, of course, with um, legislative opportunities and he wants to leverage on those templates. But then we're looking at the enormous challenges that Cross Riverians are facing right now. And one would want to start from there. Cross River State at some point used to be a destination for all to visit. I'm talking about a tourist destination with the likes of the Obudu Ranch Resort and, of course, several other places in the city. That, can that really be said of Calabar today? And you mentioned something about insecurity, which had heightened under the Ayade administration. Um, why do you think that um, this is the case today? Again, um, Cross River State used to be the number one clean maybe the cleanest state in the country at the time. Now it's been overtaken by states like Kakwaibo. Uh, should that not be some of the things that the governor should tackle before he begins to maybe engage in some other huge project as opposed to, you know, because you said he's a people's person, but the people live in the midst of trash. The people are dealing with insecurity. And of course, you've talked about food on the table. What is the... Um, the rate of businesses that are being um, that are coming into the state and investments, um, private or um, you know local investments that are in the state. Uh, we're going to quickly take a break and bring back the chairman because we are having connection issues. But stay with us. We'll be right back. It's still Plus Politics, and we're being joined by Alphonse Zeba. He is the chairman of the APC in Cross River State. Now, before we went on that break, of course, we're discussing uh, agenda setting for the new governor of the state, um, uh, Basio II. Now, before we went on, uh, we had that little glitch. I was asking, Cross River State used to be number one in terms of places to visit tourism. It was a tourist heaven. And I mentioned a few other places where, like the Ranch Resort, we had the, um, the, some other places in Calabar where you could go to uh, the Slave Trade Museum, I mean, and, and um, several other places. Right now, as we speak, Cross River is nowhere to be found on that tourism list. Again, uh, insecurity never used to be something you would mention in the same sentence with Cross River State, especially Calabar. But as we speak, we've had so many 
you know, occurrences. Uh, a, a, a former honor personality uh, in the state media was kidnapped. And this is something that you could not necessarily associate with Cross River State. Let's talk FDIs, foreign di direct investments and businesses. Um, how have they been able to thrive in that atmosphere with all of these things that I've mentioned? Insecurity did not just become a national problem. It became a global problem. With the death of Muammar Gaddafi of Libya, it became a free access for all the Al-Qaeda's and all the Islamic militias to move freely from the Central African Republic into the northern part of this country. And as you will see, the northeast flank of Bauchi through Gombe, Boronu, Adamawa, through Taraba, empties from Casina Line, Benway State, into the northern part of Cross River State, and percolates into the southern part of Cross River. Again, in 2016 to 2017, 2018, the federal government, through a deliberate policy, Oh dear, I think, I think that we're having a serious connection issue with you there, Mr. Chairman, but can you hear me? To the entire five states. I can hear you very well. Okay, go can ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I was giving you a background of how terrorism and other forms of insecurity percolated into Cross River State. The federal government, through an innocent policy, of Operation Safe Haven decided to protect the five states of the South-South region and kept Cross River State away on the understanding that Cross River State had no security challenges. But some of these criminal elements decided to relocate to the creeks in Akabuyo and Bakasi. And then the only business that tried within that period was kidnapping. But with a huge attention that was given by the former governor, Senator Professor Ben Ayade, the Operation Akpako was launched and it was able to contain the issue of insecurity. That which you used to hear has almost gone to ground zero. Today, in Cross River State, crime rate has reduced to, a bare, to its barest minimum. And I can tell you that we remain one of the safest places to be. In terms of tourism destination, I agree with you that with the establishment and renovation of both Tinapa and Obudu Katu Ranch. It came up with a new vista of technology, like the cable car that people were experiencing in Obudu Katu Ranch, like the monorail that Governor Ben Ayade also came to complete after Governor Lee Aliboke's tenure. People saw all this as destination where people could come and see things and be excited. However, Governor Ben Ayade came up with a business mindset and discovered that the multiplier financial effect of how we can have our return in terms of the investment into tourism should not just be about dancing and people coming in, but what value it can add to governance. For instance, the governor himself was heard to have said on a rise television last month, where the cable car was renovated with millions of naira. And that same year, the only money that could be recovered in terms of patronage, was less than 100,000 naira. For a man who came with a business mindset, that kind of investment was not a better return for it. But what has it done to address that issue? It was to think that, oh, getting an access road from uh, Bekwara down to Obanliku was going to help. And not just renovating the ranch, but having an airport in Obudu. As we speak today, over three kilometers of the runway has been done in the new Obudu International Cargo Airport. Because it could be very boring for you to fly to Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Every road to, to Calabar okay. and fly back. Every tourism is meant to be enjoyed. Okay. So what the governor has done is to revamp Obudokato Ranch. And if you listen very well, in the inaugural speech, of the new governor. He has spoken about paying attention to this Obudu Kato Ranch. That to me is that the completion of the airport project will also become a leap on seeing to that conclusion because you can now fly from Lagos 
straight into Obudu and enjoy yourself and travel back. That is what the proper tourism will mean, not the stress of going through a very perilous road. Interesting. What, um, let, quickly, before we go to foreign direct investment, whatever happened to Cali Air? Because the governor, I remember, said that this was also a plus. I mean, I'll make reference to your neighboring state, Akwaibom, who has Ibom Air. And we've seen how it's continuing to grow in lips and bounds. What can Cross River State boast of in terms of Cali Air? You must also understand that there is no basis for comparison. We are not on the same financial strength with Akwaibom State. Akwaibom State ends. 20 times what we earn. However, the credit you must give to governor, the governor's initiative on Cali Air was also to support tourism. It got to a point in time that the monopoly of Ibom Air skyrocketed airfares into Calabar by about 500%. Today, as I speak with you, I just booked a ticket for my wife to return to Abuja for 80-something thousand naira. When Kali Air was flying here, we never had the experience of paying more than 30 or 40,000. In fact, it started with 19,000. That was part of the challenge we were, we, we were here to address. We acquired two aircraft, and we thought we could get our own uh, license to fly this. Unfortunately, the... Nema, the NCAA changed their regulation and said for you to get your AOC, you need about three aircraft. But so shouldn't, we shouldn't, shouldn't this have been part of the planning process? Because you see, it, uh, just as you said, it's not a, it's not a, a game or, or a competition of sorts with other people. If we know what our financial status is as a, as a state, shouldn't we be working within that budget and planning to see how we can better our lot as opposed to Engaging in elephant projects that's going to cripple us. Because again, it is not an elephant and all of, this, and all of these things statement. you're saying now, shouldn't it have been part of your feasibility studies before acquiring these aircrafts? I am sure you are a journalist. Oh, and yes, you would I have am. known that the, N yes, the NCAA regulation until the period where we bought our aircraft requires you to purchase only two aircraft to have your AOC. It was when we acquired our aircraft and it was not targeted at the nine cross river state. NCA changed the regulation from two aircraft to three. And because we're not financially strong enough to acquire the third aircraft, we decided creatively to go into a partnership with Aero Contractor. Aero Contractor is known as one of the very, very uh, air, air companies that has no history of any crash and have been in operation for over 60 years. They are into aircraft maintenance and all whatnot. That is why we went into them. But shortly after then, they had their challenge with Amcom. That was the hitch and glitch we suffered temporarily. But mm. Cali Air has been back on air, except that because of the traffic to other parts of northern countries, uh, northern Nigeria, and because it's a Boeing 737, there is no need for it coming to Cross River with such a subsidized rate by government because they also want to make profit on the investment of, of the partnership. So it's not as Cali Air is a wild fan project. Airy Air is still on air. It flies on that route. Why aero contractors send their smaller aircraft to fly cross river state route in Calabar? Hmm. Interesting. So it is not a wasted investment. Yes. Interesting. Uh, let's talk about um, investments in cross river state so far under the uh, previous administration. Of course, um, the governor had mentioned that she's going to do a lot of collaborations within and without the state, of course, to bring more business and put Cross River back on the map. Um, how do you think he intends to do that? And what, if you were opportune to advise the governor on how to get these foreign direct investments, where should he be targeting for someone who's watched an IADA government? The governor himself has stated clearly where the agro-tourism will land its map and it's taking advantage of the over 20 industries that Governor Ede have built. Some have been commissioned today. He did not just stop at that. He spoke about health tourism. I just came back from Obudu, where the Obudu German hospital, that was a part of the cross state government and the coast charis, Nigeria, 
first of its kind, a world-class health center with the best equipment and facilities. I go to Dubai in the Saudi German hospital to do my health check every two years. But I can tell you what I saw in Obudu was equipment, were equipment that were most sophisticated and the ambience of the environment that runs even better than what I see in Dubai. Therefore, there will be medical tourism now to cross River State, all courtesy of Governor Ben Ayade, of which the present governor is coming to also build on. Again, he talked about educational tourism in his manifesto, and which is also contained the People's First. Today, the Teachers Training Continuous College, TCTC, in Biase, is a world-class digital learning center. The new private university, which is also a partnership between the private sector and Cross River State in Obudu, the University of uh, Medicine and, uh, and Law, is also another avenue where people will drive tourism into Cross River State for the agricultural, for the health, and the educational. What's the, what's so the, accessi what's the accessibility the level? What, how accessible are these places? Because everything you've mentioned seems to be in one location. It seems like all the uh, the no, the, got, the hospital. Say, no, I'm just saying it's in one direction. How accessible are these places? What is the road network? Um, I mean, you've told us that the, that you have tried to walk on the runway, taking you to to Napa. What is the accessibility to the German hospital? What's the accessibility to the one in Biase? Again, let's not forget that if people have to have access to that hospital, they need to be able to go there by road because not everybody can fly. And besides, there are no runways in those places. Yes. And that is why I told you that. The setting up of the airport in Obudu will do so much to complement the investment in Obudu. But the project in TCTC, which is in Biase, it takes you one hour, 30 minutes from Calabar to get to Biase. It's a world-class institution. And don't forget, even before the airport in Obudu will come on board, should you land in Enugu, or you are coming by road from Abuja, the road today from Abuja down to Boko is a dual carriage expressway. You have only a short wall network between Boko to, to Vandikia area. When you get to a uh, we're having a poor connection from you again, Mr. Chairman, but quickly, if you can hear me, I'm just going to go to talk about, again, the governor, the governor of the state, the new governor, and of course, what are the proposals for um, this new administration? I, I want to find out, the incoming government, where do they start to hit the ground running? You keep talking about agriculture with a wave of a hand, agriculture. Uh, Cross River State is obviously also known for its agrarian nature, but how much of that agriculture have we really, really bought into? We heard about the rice farming that was part of some of the, um, you know, I think it was part of the campaign that Governor Ben Ayadi used. We heard about all sorts of things, but really, where is Kalachik? Kalachika, or whatever it's called. Um, what happened to the rice farm? <laughs> we've seen, all, we've heard so many things, but we've not necessarily seen how these things have grown and how they've been able to impact our uh, finances or the financial status of the state. So, if we're looking at agriculture, and as you said, Prince Otu is going to face this. Where does he start from? Should he probe what happened to the rice uh, factory? Should he probe what's happened to Kalachika? Because someone has to start from somewhere. So where does he go from there? And if we're looking at agriculture, um, what kind of infrastructure have we put in place that would not just help us to move away from the hoe and machete to mechanized farming? We pay lip service to it, but in actuality, should we have not at least gotten to graduated to the point of mechanized farming in Cross River State, being an agrarian state? We have staple foods in Cross River State. One of them is rice. One of them is cassava. Then, our protein, the best, which is better, is chicken. Consumption by children and even adults, beverages, cocoa. Cross River State today has comparative advantage in not just the growing of this kind of crops, but in processing of these crops. 
Today, the vitaminized rice seed and seedling factory in Calabar, with the best technology which is tested and trusted, first of its kind in Africa, still exists in the Ayade Industrial Park in Calabar. How much metric Today, ton, how rice many rice metric ton of rice do you produce in a day? I can't hear you. How much how many metric ton of rice do you produce in a day? You have a great infrastructure. What are you using it for? No, we have the, the ultra modern rice mill in Ogojayala has an installed capacity for five to fifty metric ton per hour. Installed so, capacity. So how many do you produce in a day as we speak today? How many has it produced? I was in that factory last week and they told me that because of the lack of paddy, they have not been able to meet up their own target. So sometimes they do five metric tons and just stop at that. But they intend to increase it to about 16 metric tons per hour. So it's not living up that to its capacity. That's what, that's what you're telling me. It's not living up to its capacity. Yeah, yeah it's not living up to its capacity. And that is where the Prince Otto's focus of telling Crossivarian that agriculture is to go comes into being. We have no business with poverty. We have able, energetic young men in Cross River State. We have swamp. But the people are poor. We don't have any business. We don't have any business with poverty, but the people seem to be poor. There are no jobs. There are people who are... The people are poor because... The people are poor because the enabling environment for government support to farmers... The equipment, mechanized implements for them to use has over time not been made available. But now that we have processing facilities, now that we have technology that has been introduced into this, and now that the government of Prince Basiada to two is focused on developing this sector, we are saying that poverty is bye-bye to cross river state. Okay. And myself sitting here with you today, I took the initiative when in the last few years, the governor said, your hands on the plow, your food on the table. I started livestock farming. To oh my goodness. Uh, it's uh, been a very tricky network. I have overwhelming. But now that Prince Otu is coming and has come on board and wants to support the sector, I want to go and improve my rice cultivation in a large scale okay. so that I can also contribute to feeding the rice meal. And I will call on every young man and woman to also join in that. Okay. Um, I want to say thank you. Unfortunately, because we're having this connection issue, we're unable to touch on some of the other things. Uh, but hopefully I will be able to have the governor here on this show to tell us himself what his plans are for the people of Cross River State. Um, Alphonsus Eba is the chairman of the All Progressive Congress in Cross River State. Thank you so much for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you. All right. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be discussing the controversy over the title of the Obong of Calabar. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>